Hey everyone, Sin here. Today we're going to do some engineering and stuff. In this video, I'm going to show you how to upload Lynx firmware to an ESP8266 so you're able to program it in LabVIEW. This firmware was in beta as of 2017 and it is not available through the firmware wizard in LabVIEW. But with a few tweaks, you can get it up and running and upload it to your ESP8266. The process is pretty straightforward and if you're savvy in C, you can customize the firmware to further suit your needs. But if you just want to make an LED blink, this is the guide for you. I'm not going to go into any detail on the source code for this firmware, as it is not within the scope of this video. I'm going to have the steps listed on the left hand side, so you can pause the video as you please and follow at your own pace. An assumption on my part is I'm assuming you already know how to program an ESP8266 and use it. However, if you don't, check out my previous video where I go into depth on this topic. All the required files will be linked down below in the video description. This video is based on posts from a LabVIEW Maker Hub form, which is also linked in the description below. So all credit goes to those contributors there, but this video will summarize them all for your convenience. Now let's get started. So the first step is to navigate to the GitHub repository, which contains the Lynx firmware files that we need. The link is on the screen and in the description. Simply navigate to the green button labeled Clone or Download on the right, left click and select Download Zip. Once you have this zip file, unzip it into the directory of your choice. Next, once we have our unzip folder, we need to override the existing links source directory with the one we just downloaded. So navigate to C, Program Files x86, or just Program Files if you're running a 32-bit system. National Instruments, LabVIEW 2019 in my case, or whichever version you are using. But please note, Lynx is only supported from 2014 onwards. Next, navigate to vi.lib, Maker Hub, Lynx, Firmware. Locate and overwrite the source folder here with the source folder located in the zip file, located in Lynx Dev ESP8266 Config 2.1 LabVIEW VI.lib Maker Hub Lynx Firmware Source Once that's done, let's launch LabVIEW and generate the firmware libraries. Once LabVIEW is open, go to Tools Maker Hub Lynx Generate Firmware Libraries When the GUI opens, Browse to the Arduino Libraries folder usually located in Documents, Arduino, Libraries. Click Generate and the Lynx Libraries will be pasted into the Arduino Libraries folder. The modified firmware for the Lynx ESP8266 and ESP8266 Wi-Fi Listener folders are now copied to the Arduino Libraries folder. Now we need to override the source code and header files of the ESP8266 Wi-Fi Listener folder with our modified files, which are located on my GitHub. Navigate back to Documents, Arduino, Libraries, and locate the Lynx ESP8266 Wi-Fi Listener folder. In this folder, we need to overwrite Lynx ESP8266 Wi-Fi Listener.cpp and Lynx ASP8266 Wi-Fi Listener.h with our modified files. Once this is done, we should be ready to upload our firmware to the ESP8266. Open the ESP8266 Wi-Fi DHCP configuration file I know, also located on my GitHub. Enter your Wi-Fi network's SSID and password and upload the sketch to your ESP8266. And if all goes well, the acquired IP address will be displayed on the serial monitor and you'll be ready to program your ESP8266 in LabVIEW. However, if you're like me, you will get a bunch of compilation errors. If we take a closer look at the errors in the output console, we can observe the following. In the links file linkswiringdevice.cpp, a call to the member function digital write square wave is producing an error. This error occurs on line 235 of the file and is an ambiguous call to the tone function. Now from my limited expertise in C and some googling, this means the compiler can't work out which tone function to call because it's defined in more than one file somewhere. 
And if we look a bit further down, we can see the files that the tone function is defined in. As for our case, because I can't be bothered fixing this bug, I'll just circumvent it because we don't need the right digital square wave function. Now to do this, simply locate linkswiringdevice.cpp on your device and open it with your text editor of choice. I'm using Notepad++. Go to line 235 and lo and behold we're calling the tone function twice in the digital write square wave function. I'm just going to comment these out, save the file and then see if we can compile. And like magic, we can. If you know how to resolve this error properly, let me know down below in the comments. Okay, now that we've compiled the code successfully and uploaded it to the ESP8266, we can now attempt to program it through LabVIEW. Open LabVIEW and go to Help, Find Examples. Now once the example finder opens, go to the search tab and type Links. Double click the keyword links and all the available examples will be listed in the middle. Locate the links blink simple tcp.vi and double click on it to open the example. Once the example is open, simply enter the IP address and port number of the ESP8266 that was listed on the serial terminal output of the Arduino IDE and then set digital output channel to 1. Once you have done this, cross your fingers and run the VI. If the VI runs without any errors and you can see the loop break going, you have successfully connected to your ESP8266 and can now program it in LabVIEW. If you play around with the Boolean control, you can turn on and off the LED on the ESP8266. Just know that the on and off state of the ESP8266 is inverted so when you turn the LED off, the LED on the device will turn on and vice versa. If this annoys you, you can simply fix it by using the not logic function in the block diagram. Thanks for watching my video. If you enjoyed this, please like, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next part.